And so with severe stabbing chest pain around your right hand, severe pain that is terrible. You are healed. Someone with heart palpitation is healed in Jesus' name. There's someone who you don't bathe cold water. Now, for the first time, go home, bathe cold water. You will never have that problem. And tomorrow, testify. You are healed in Jesus' name. We give you praise, mighty God. We give you praise, mighty God. Yes, doctor. Papa, yes. for two months she has had excruciating low back pain. But she gave the word of knowledge, the pain completely vanished. Before, previously, she couldn't squat without pain. But right in this service, she can squat. Do something. You the pain is completely pain. vanished. Bend no again. No pains. You're free now. Go and enjoy your life. Give him praise and I give So this young lady said she woke up this morning with excruciating low back pain. But whilst we are ministering, the pains disappeared and she's completely made whole. Give Jesus a hand. Pastor, he also came with a right knee pain. He's been there for months. And once he gave the word of knowledge, he squatted and there was no pain. Give Jesus a hand. Give him a hand if you're clapping for him. You can do better in the name of Jesus. Yes, you may be still at church. Pastor, he gave a word of knowledge about someone who had severe ankle pain. He had a dislocation in the ankle, and ever since then, he had been in pain. But immediately after the word of knowledge came, the pain completely disappeared. He can flex the no ankle pain. freely. He can extend Move it your freely legs. without any issues. No pain. No pains. Give Jesus a hand. Every stamina. Check yourself. You won't stammer. In Jesus' name, and then get up and speak to someone and come out. There will be no stammering tongue. Okay. And now I know he touched Yes, it is.
medical team go ahead. Pastor, three weeks ago, he fell down from a bicycle and since then he couldn't bend and he had excruciating pain on his knee. But right here, the pain has disappeared. This young man can bend. He can do everything no he couldn't do before. No pain. Yes, sir. He fell from a bike. Glory to God. You won't fall again. Pastor, she yeah. said she had chest pain that was so excruciating. In fact, she said she came to church with a chest pain. And while in church, she had the word of knowledge and she has been observing herself. No, no pain. pains. Gave Jesus a yes. <laughs> this is a small boy. What happened, doctor? Pastor, you gave a word of knowledge about someone with a stabbing chest pain and you were precise. You said on the right side. He said since Monday, he had had that chest pain on the right side. Our boy. After the word of knowledge, the pain no completely pain. disappeared. No pain? Yes, sir. Oh, give Jesus a hand. For a small boy, it's very discomforting. You know what I mean? Okay. What's your name? Christian. Christian. Christian? Oh, be very intelligent in school. In Jesus, I love you. Eh? Give this a big hand. Yes. Pastor, she came to church with excruciating pain in her head. She said the headache was so severe that when she bent down... I know it's down, I know my name, toothache is healed. Everybody with toothache, check yourself. Somebody's gum is filled supernaturally. In the name of Jesus. Yes. She said when she bends down, it feels like her head is going to pull out. But when you gave the word of knowledge about someone with migraine being healed, instantly she got her healing. And it's Every not funny. If, if it gets that point where you see what your head wants to pull out, it's not funny. Your God healed you. Yeah. Glory to God. Give Jesus a hand. Yes. Pastor, for 15 years, say this had recurrent boil on the, around the anal region. It comes, it's purulent, it, that means it's pussy, and it's very painful. But she, right in this service, the boil completely vanished. I have examined it, there's no trace of boil. Will you give Jesus a hand? 15 years. You ain't clapping for Jesus. 15 years. Oh, God is a good God. Go and enjoy your life, young boy. There's someone who cannot turn your neck like this without pain. Now turn your neck. Turn again. You slept and woke up and this is terrible. Turn again. No pain. Turn again. No pain. Turn the neck. No pains. Turn the neck. That's the end. Shall we rise? Shall we tell God thank you for the instant testimonies? Tell him thank you. Anything you thank God for multiplies. Tell him consciously thank you for the miracles, signs, and wonders. And as you're thanking him, more will be done. Thank him, thank him, and thank him, and thank him. Thank him and tell him thank you. Blessed be the name of God forever. Thank you for it. We give you praise. Father, speak to us in this first session. In the name of Jesus, let your word be a word of life. In Jesus' mighty name, give him a big hand. You may be seated. In this meeting, I'll be sharing with you, brand yourself. Brand, B-R-A-N-D. B-R-A-N-D. Brand yourself. It's more of an advice. <laughs> As a person in business or career, you have to build a brand. And your brand defines how much your business will strive and the sustainability of the business. How you brand yourself will determine how far you go in business. How far you can sustain that business will be a function of how you brand yourself. But in a world of materialism, Instead of creating our brands to create an edge in our career and business, we promote other people's brands. And as seen investing most, if not all, our income in wearing people's brands as part of our achievements. We believe that it is what we wear that determines who we are. That is not business. Because I'm taking career and business. Because not everybody is in business. There are career men also. So I must meet 
the two sides. Is that clear? A research was done recently about brands and materialism among women in particular. That was done, but this is not only to women, but this particular one I'm talking about, the research was done amongst women in particular. The approach of the data collection was to push women to state how much they were worth. So they were trying to take a statistic to see what's the worth of a woman. They wanted to know how each woman sees herself, how she's worth. In the society, in business, in career, how she sees herself, how to know her worth. But the same thing goes to the men. But this particular is how much for women. In a particular instance, one woman told the researcher, do you know how much I am worth? The researcher came to her and said, I want to know your worth. He said, do you know how much I'm worth? And the researcher saw that she was wearing a Gucci, life story, and other brands worth $8,000 on her body. So her worth she was determining was based on what she wore. That's how she has saw herself, that her own worth is based on the designer she is wearing. That's how she saw herself. Another woman was asked how much she was worth. And she explained her achievements and her, her line of business. The researcher further probed to find out how much was the price of shoe and clothes she was wearing to other woman. And it was discovered she wore more expensive things than the other lady who bragged about Gucci and the likes. When asked why didn't she wear popular brands, she responded, and I quote her, I am a brand. I don't need to use any brand to be identified. I am successful as a brand. I spend time creating and improving my brand. My success cannot be identified by the popular brands I wear. Unquote. She was only saying, do you want to know who I am? It is not what I wear that makes me who I am. It is what I carry on the inside. People don't need to know me because I wear Gucci or LV or popular thing. They need to know me for who I am. And looking at it from scriptures in Luke chapter 17 verse 21, Jesus speaking made a statement. He said, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. What will make you is not what is outside. What will make you is what is, is on your inside. He said the entire kingdom of God is on your inside. So it is what you carry on the inside that determines what you reflect on the outside. Your greatness in business, your greatness in your career is a function of how you discover what is on your inside that will reflect on the outside. Shout hallelujah. Tell yourself I'll create my own brand. Say it one more time. Say like a child of God. Materialism and showing off popular brands don't necessarily mean you are rich. Do you hear what I said? It means you are not developing yourself enough to be known. <laughs> I repeat. That you are wearing a designer's does not mean you are rich. It means you are not developing yourself to be known. If Bill Gates appear now, you'll be surprised he will not wear any designers. You don't look at him and say, that is Bill Gates. You don't know him with the shoe he wears. You know him for who he is. And it's not the shoe that makes him Bill Gates. It's the kind of socks in his business that makes him Bill Gates. It is not the shoe that makes him Bill Gates. It's the thing in him that makes him Bill Gates. It's not what I wear that makes me Bill Gates. It's what I carry. My brand is myself. Not the designers I wear. Businessmen, hear me. It is not the car you drive that makes you a successful businessman. If you don't have a shop, you drive a big car, you're a failure. 
It is not the brand of car that makes you that you drive a Ferrari and Lamborghini does not make you a successful businessman. It is the quality of your business that makes you a successful businessman. So where am I going? Stop focusing on those designers. Stop focusing on yourself. In career and business. The money you have invested. It's not wrong buying them. Please don't misquote me. But in business, first make sure you have a brand before you start buying things. If a way is stood on a chamber, then will not make him a man. That a gorilla wears coat, he will never be a man. A clerk that wears designer will never be a manager. Develop yourself to be a manager. You have one chaos and you're carrying a bag of 5,000. It does not change your status. They will not respect you for the bag you carry. They will respect you for the shop you have. Are you getting me, businessman? Because there's a misplacement of priority for career men and businessmen. When I think that what makes you is what you carry and what you wear, what makes you is who you are in business. Make sure you develop yourself to be the preacher. Develop yourself to be the doctor, the nurse, the carpenter, the businessman and woman. Let them say, that is the owner of that business. That is your brand. Your brand is who you are, not what you wear. There's so much misplacement of priority. Our brand has become what we wear. No, no, no. Spend that money to become something. It's not the Gucci and LV you wear that makes you who you are. So I hear. A businessman hear what I'm saying here? That is the true brand. Your what is within yourself. Your what is what? So my what is within myself. It's not what they see me on the outside. Shout hallelujah. Now life story. Sometime I went to hotel presidential. I will never forget it. I drove myself. I've not reached this level in life. I drove was this Hyundai, the old model, that small car. It was my wife's car, also one small Hyundai car, one tiny car like that. So I drove it myself. I can never forget. I went to see a bishop. And well, so many men of God were there. And I was the only one who came with the least car. All the rest came with sirens and heavy land cruisers. And when we got to hotel presidential Port Harcourt, I just alerted from the car. The whole pressman ran after me. I said, I want to hear something from you. I said, see all these great men of God. as I say, it's you who want to hear from. And if I tell you that I wore very simple sandals and a simple native. The others parted their shoes. But I said, how come? With me, I said, how come they left all these heavy men with these big cars around to me? They said, it's you who want to, to talk. I said, I don't talk to press. Leave me alone. They said, but I want you to talk. Lesson is coming. What am I saying? It is not the car that makes you. It is who you are. Businessmen stop spending on the wrong things. You don't have a rich library to read. You have bought all the material things. That's not what makes you successful. What am I saying? Be identified in your field as the best, not by the brands. Be what? In your field as the best, not by the brands you wear. Be identified in your field as what? The best, not the brand you wear. Your true worth is not based on what you wear, but on who you are. It is not what I wear that makes me who I am. Say that again. Say it like a child of God. Please never misquote me. I'm not saying you should not wear good things, but that should not be your first priority. Your first priority is to create a brand for yourself. Let them know you with a successful business before you wear the designers. 
At that time, anything you wear, nobody cares for that. But you don't carry a designer shoe when you don't have a brand. People should know you as a successful pastor. They should know you as a successful doctor. They should know you as a successful businesswoman. They should know that you are successful in your office. Materialism is not what makes you. So I don't invest in the wrong thing. You have $20,000. You went to buy shoes. You have not opened a shop. And you're a businessman. You're an architect. You have not bought any new equipment. Yet you have buying new cars. It's not the car that they would use to know you. It's your designs they used to You're a teacher. You have not gone for any professional course. You have not improved your teaching skills. Yet you are busy buying designers. Who will respect you? They will respect you based on the kind of quality of education you give to the children. They say that's the teacher amongst teachers. So I hear. Take time to develop yourself. Take time to do what? Never settle for mediocrity. Take time to do what? Develop yourself. Take time to do what? Develop yourself. Everyone wants to be successful in business. Take time to do what? Develop yourself. Take time. Invest in self-development. Read books. Improve on your performance. What did I say? Read what? Improve on your performance. Pay the price to be great. Pay the price to be some three things here. One, read books. Read what? Number two, improve on your performance. Three, pay the price to be great. Four, make sacrifice. Make what? That is, inconvenience yourself to move to the next level. Make some sacrifices. You'll be great. I said you'll be great. I said you will be great. You will succeed. That's what makes you a great person. Your brand. Your what? Brand yourself. It's not to do. Don't be. Brand what? Brand yourself. Is there somebody get here somebody here? So somebody hear anything? You sure hear something? You don't need more than two words to react against failure. Brand yourself. Tell yourself I stop spending the wrong things. Some things you're wasting your money for, they are wrong things. Hmm? Brand yourself. Brand yourself. Brand yourself. Brand yourself. Brand yourself. Brand yourself. Hey. Do you know Ronaldo invests a lot in himself? I find that. A lot. Before Ronaldo got to this level, do you know he had a heart problem? Have you ever had it? He had a major heart surgery as a small boy. And grew up. Messi was not supposed to grow. Messi had some stunted growth. That's why they took him from Argentina to Spain for medical checkup. They invested in themselves. Don't you see branding matters? Now, see how branding is powerful. Some of you wear Messi. Some of you wear Jesse and put on it Messi. Jesse, your name is not Messi, but you wear it. We have Messi. Some of you wear it now. Ronaldo. <laughs> you see? They have created a brand. You, some of you wear it. Ronaldo. Even uh, Zidane, some of you wear it. It's not a bad thing. Let the carpenter go and brand himself. That the one they see, they say, boy, look at that furniture man. That guy is good. Look at that man. That nurse, she knows her job. That's the branding. Hey, that job. When they say nurse, they say that nurse is exceptional. Go to her. She's so good. She knows her job. That's the brand. Look at that guy. He can sing. He doesn't play with his assignment. 
go to him. If you want to learn how to sing, go to him. I have a brand. It's not the one I'm wearing a Gucci. I'm wearing a LV. I'm wearing this, and then you have nothing to offer. Nobody knows you. Rise to your feet. <laughs> Woo! Some of us are here. So invest. Invest in knowledge. Invest in what? That's what I'm saying. Invest in? Invest in knowledge. That's where the brand comes from. Invest in? Invest in knowledge. Invest in knowledge. The money you use to buy them, use it to buy knowledge. Mm. Invest in what? Invest in knowledge. Invest in? A time will come, the thing you wear self is not what they used to know you. Now even if I wear LV, it's me they know. If today... Bill Gates come, wears LV, Gucci. You won't be looking at it. It's the man you'll be looking at me. You say, Bill Gates, Bill Gates. You won't even look at what is wearing because he already has a brand. If Oede Kwana comes and wears Gucci, everything, you won't be looking at the Gucci. You say, look at the man. He's because he has a... You first brand yourself. Those, those are not the things that make you. That's something. Stop wasting your money on materialism when you don't have a brand. That's all my teaching. That's all I'm talking First of all, have a brand before you wear material things. Don't go for materialism when you don't have a brand. Do you understand where I'm going? Before the materialism, first focus on what? So develop yourself where people know you with something. They know you with it. Then you can wear those things if it has a meaning. But those things now determine who you are. Lord, may I know how to place my priority right. May I know how to do what? Today. Let my focus not be distorted. Let me know what or where to put my focus. And what should be my priority? Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Let me place my priority right. Are you talking to God at all? Let me place my priority right in the name of Jesus. Blessed be God. Now let me tell you something. There's a woman in Nigeria. She's worth 1.1 billion dollars. Her name is Alakija. Google Alakija addressing is very simple. She's the richest black woman right now. She's a Nigerian. She's a fashion designer by profession. But Alakita is not flamboyant. She's modest in her dressing. I don't say can't be flamboyant. But such a woman who has such money is modest. Is what? Modest. You don't even have three million in your account. That if they flog you now, you can't bring three million. You are now moving as if the road, you cover it. <laughs> cool down. Invest. Invest what? Watch people who have a brand, they are very modest. Even most very brilliant lecturers, they dress simple. Check them. They look very. You'll be surprised a lecturer will be simple. A clerk in the office will wear gold everywhere. It's complex sometimes. It's, it has to do with complex. It has to do with. First, get a brand. Get a what? Brand. If everyone gets a brand, nobody will be a failure. Because what will make you succeed, we have told you all. Invest in knowledge. Go and buy books. Buy what? Improve yourself in your career and profession. Pay the price to be great. I mean, in less than one year, everybody will know you. Then after they've known you, you now can buy those things. But you are not known. Nobody will respect you. If you like, we are all the designers. When the person who has a brand appears, they will push you behind. And most people go for those things. It's complex. It's what? They use it to cover up. If you know who you are, what's your business? <laughs> True? You are who you are, not based on your dress. Based on what you carry on the so be more interested in developing the and just the outer man. I'm sure you got something. Are businessmen here? Career people? You got something? 
go and invest in knowledge. Invest in what? Knowledge. knowledge. What makes you who you are is your business. Is your what? Improve the business than just buying material things. First, invest in the business. Take the business to a place where they know you as a brand. They call your name. They say she's the owner of that restaurant. That eating place. That is the owner. So you already have a brand. So you say, do you, know, do you know that place? That place. That is the owner. So you have a brand. They say, that big supermarket. That is the owner. That is the owner. So you have a brand. You have a what? Lift your hands one more time and give thanks to God. Give him thanks and praise. Tell him thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your name forever. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Winning simply means to turn out successful, especially in a competition. Winning means to turn out what? Successful, especially in a competition. Supernatural, this is something attributed to God that transcends the laws of nature. Supernatural means it's something attributed to who? That transcends the laws of nature. Winning supernaturally is to turn out successful from a given challenge by applying principles drawn from the word of God which transcends the laws of nature. Now if I want to operate in the supernatural, I must know who I am where I am from and what I'm worth. For me, to operate in the supernatural, you must know who you are, where you are from, and what you are worth. I repeat, for you to operate in the supernatural, you must know who you are, where you are from, and what you are worth. Your worth is actually revealed from the word of God. The word of God is the true mirror that gives you the right picture of who you are in Christ. You can't know your true identity except through the word of God. If you want to operate in the supernatural, the word of God is the true mirror. It's the true that gives you the true picture of who you are. Let me say something that may look funny. Have you ever said like this? And I said, look, do I really look ugly? People say I'm ugly. Is that true? For you to ask that question, you have complex. You have what? Because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So you don't need to ask anybody whether you're ugly. You, you are fine. Hmm? People say I'm ugly. Is that true? That you ask that question, you have a problem. You have a what? Because the mirror of God's word says you are fearfully and wonderfully so what on earth will make you ask somebody's opinion when you know you're the opinion of God? You know, when you have God's word, you don't ask people's opinion. In James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. You read verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's like beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholded himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetted what manner of man he was. You read verse 25. Who so looketh into the perfect law of what? Who looks into the mirror of God's word? He will see a reflection of who he is. So it is the picture from the scriptures that will define my future that I want to feature. When I'm able to see the true picture from where? Scriptures. I look at myself and see my real self from scriptures. It will not determine what I will be in the future and then that will determine what I will feature. F-E-A-T-U-R-E. -E. Let me say this to you. Without proper understanding of your identity in Christ, frustration is inevitable. If you don't understand who you are in Christ, Satan can take you for a ride. God forbid. Many don't know who they are. We'll be looking at what is your true identity. 
And today I want to make you talk bold. If you're praying for that, talk what? Think bold, talk bold, act bold, and then walk bold. What is your true identity? What is my true identity? <laughs> what is my true identity? What is my true identity? You are spirit in human flesh. You are what? You are spirit in human flesh. Then John chapter 3, 5 and 6. Jesus answered, Very, very, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is what? And that which is born of the spirit is what? So, I'm a spirit, but I'm putting human body. Is that true? Glory to God. That is who I am. I'm a spirit. Putting what? Human body. I'm not ordinary. Because I am born in the image of God. And the image of God is not his flesh, it's his spirit. So, I hear. Who am I? Number two, I'm a lion. Tell me you're a lion. Say, say I'm a lion. Say like a child of God. Say it and mean it. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seas there. The lion, who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Jesus? Lion? Now, hear what he said, the lion. John 17, 18. Shall we read John 17, 18? Combine the two so you can understand it. As thou hast sent me into the world... Even so, I have also sent them into the world. So, if Jesus is a lion, where are you? Lion. Say it one more time. Lion. So, you share the same DNA with Christ. You share the same what? With who? Christ. So, you possess the same lion nature in him. The same lion nature inside Christ is what is inside you. You know, if they want to know the child of it, they say, well, let's go and check the DNA. Is that true? Now, the DNA inside you is the DNA of who? And is Christ a lion? Then who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Now, paint that picture from scriptures. Paint it from where? And see yourself the way God says it. If you don't have scriptural paintings before you, you you'll be fidgeting over small things. Paint the scripture. Paint what? As a picture before your eyes and say, I'm a lion. Say with me, I'm a lion. Say like a child of God. Say like a child of God. Say like a child of God. Kenneth Hagin says something in one of his books. He said, a small cub, the baby lion, was picked and kept among sheep. And this baby lion grew with sheep. So every morning they would go to the water, the stream, and then they would drink water. While they are drinking, a physical lion will appear and all the sheep will run, including this baby lion that grew with the sheep. He will run. He will all run. It kept happening, kept happening, kept happening. Then one day, while they were drinking water, you know, in water, there's reflection. That's what? So as this baby lion was drinking, he discovered that the shape and his look was not like the sheep. He looked more like the lion that comes to pursue them. So he looked like, I don't look back again. I don't look like this one. I look like the one pursuing us. He was able to see his true image. Ephesians 5.26. Because God's water is the word of God. He saw the reflection of his image. This time, as the lion appeared, he refused to run. 
Because at that point, he has discovered his what? True identity. That it is not like this one. He is like the one pursuing them. So, as the lion came, he stood. He didn't run. The lion now wagged his tail. I said, welcome to our family. And two of them entered the bush. We have stayed around sinners. We have stayed around all believers. So every small thing, we shake like them. He said, they are, they are kidnapping in that town. Oh, don't go. If you go, you won't come back. So even when you hear small noise, he said, blood of Jesus. They said there is a wizard in that compound. Make sure you don't live there. He said, did you hear there is a wizard? Me, I will never go to that place for anything. No. You have not seen your true picture. You know what the Bible said concerning you? Proverbs 30. I'm trying to paint a picture. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Proverbs 30, 29, 30. <laughs> Look at yourself and say, I'm unmolestable. I'm in charge. He said, there be three things which go well. Yea, four are comely in going. A lion which is strongest among beasts and turn it not away for it. So, you are not to turn away from challenges. Challenges should turn away from you. Hey, de bragatia. You are not to turn away from a wizard. A wizard should turn away from you. You are not to turn away from any demonic force. The demonic force should turn away from you. Because who you are, you, you are the one that harasses. They don't harass you. So that's who I am. Talk like a child of God. Say it like a child of God. So we are to dominate our territory. What do you want? Listen, we are to dominate our territory. Wherever we are, we dominate. When the lion may, woo, every creature within that territory, quiet. When they roar, that environment, all the animals will begin to look. So where is this lion roaring from? So, Occultic men and witches should not harass you. When you say the name of they say, she has started, she has started, she has started. Oh boy, no flight this night. Don't fly, it's no flight zone. So all the witches that night they go and break. They say she's operating no flight zone. You pray, oh, but you don't know who you are. So it makes even the prayer you pray in fear. When a lion is walking, this is how he walks with his legs. What makes a lion is not his size, it's his heart. What makes you great is your heart. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 28, it's a nothing terrified by your adversaries. Which is to them an evident token of partition. But to you of salvation and that of God. For God has not given us what? The spirit of fear. But of power of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 Let me say this to you. What makes the lion? Lion is the food he eats. Is what? He does not eat dead food. He eats raw meat. Fresh. He eats what? Fresh meat. Lions don't eat decayed meat. They eat fresh meat. So if you want to stay strong like a lion, keep eating fresh what? Fresh what? So fresh revelation from the word of God is what keeps the lion in you alive. So constantly feed on the word. First of all, what? And then not, now listen. Long ago, somebody threatened this church. I said, you should bring this church down. The man was in power. And I was feeding on the word of God and I saw, I will build my church. The builder is the lion himself. 
And I said to them, boy, relax. I will go to sleep because the one who owns the church, you don't try him. If you try him, he'll conk you to hell. He said, if you fall upon me, I'll business you. I fall upon you, I grind you to powder. Whichever way you don't escape. So I said, the owner of the church is Jesus. It's a very dangerous rock to try. No mortal man can fight any church that knows their left from their right and succeed. Who is the owner? Who is the owner? And hear what he said in Matthew 21 to 44. He said, if I fall upon you, you're in trouble. If... And whosoever shall fall upon this stone, shall be what? That is, if you come to jam the church, you'll be broken. If the church jam you, you are pieces. Whichever way you don't escape. Look at it. But on whosoever it shall fall, it shall what? Grind him to what? So whichever way the church, if the church come after you, you are in trouble. If you come after the church, you are in trouble. Do you understand it? And somebody is crying, they say they want to deal with my church. He doesn't know his left from his right. When they lie on you, come on. I will. When I rule like this, most of you, you rule. Long, long ago, they threatened me. 1997, I will never forget. We were just young. We came to Paragon and they sent me a message. They say, Look, tell that man he's come to the stop here. We just came newly. The welcome address was that shall not disturb. We didn't hold all night with instruments. Listen, that's why you need to know about the supernatural. The negative men, they monitor you from spiritual, don't they monitor you from physical? We held all night, no. We don't have instruments. Where will instruments come from? We are just few people. Normal prayer, the way you pray in your house. But they were able to pick it in the split realm. That some persons have come to GRA in Port Harcourt to disturb the environment. Because before we came, you don't make noise here. And they sent physical message to me. I'm not saying dream. A young man came and said, Sir, some people sent me to you that you are disturbing. Don't disturb here. That is the welcome address. Welcome to Port Harcourt. Then me too, I woke up. The reason why they are trusting you is you are too quiet. I woke up at midnight at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. No, everywhere is dead quiet anywhere in the world. So every devil hear me. Is the lion in me that rule out? I said, every devil hear me now. I didn't send myself. He sent me. For you to say that I should not you get out of Port Harcourt now. The following day, the leader died. But if I wasn't the lion... So what do I do now? They say we should not disturb. We should not disturb. So you now pack your Bible and go and say where? There is no free place. If you want lion share, you must have lion heart. That they are opposing you is an indication that there is something big there. Satan will never oppose you. Where not anywhere you see opposition, there is a big position. Anyway, see what? There is big position awaiting. Anywhere you go to and something stiff is against you, know that something good is there. So at that time is when your lion should come out. He said, look, devil and your agents, you can't stop me here. My appointment must be given to me. My lifting cannot be stopped. And I said to you, the lion in you will make you take that place. Every force in hell resisting what God has given to you will bow to you in the name of Jesus. Say with me from this day, Get up like a lion. Get up for one minute. Say from today, I roar as a lion in the name of Jesus. Every devil against my life, against my destiny. Now release arrows. Open your mouth and release arrows. Release arrows. Release arrows. Release arrows. Speak with authority. Talk with power. Every devil against my life, against my destiny, I curse you. I curse you. In the name of Jesus, I curse you. I curse that evil. Open your mouth. Open your as a lion. Rua. 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 I cause an evil. I cause in the name of Jesus.
so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. From today, everything that dares will bow to you. So stop running away from challenges. Run and face the knowing full where you are. He said, he turn it not back for others turn back. So you should not be turning back in battle. Let others turn back. Just imagine if we have left GRA. Do you know the challenges we face here? Before we start, got to this point, at the headquarters, I mean, boy, forces came against us. They're the ones who ran away. Everyone ran away, left us here. Just imagine if we ran away. Can you imagine a pig pursuing a lion? It's an anatema. Satan is a pig. Satan is a dog. You are a lion. If a pig should pursue a lion, how does it look like? Running away because of a witch is an insult. Running away because of a wizard is an anatema. Wizards should run away because of you. And that is how it will be from today. <laughs> be baptized with the lion's nature in the name of Jesus. <laughs> May the heart of a lion in you come alive. In Jesus' name. You are an eagle. You are what? Who am I? I am an eagle. You are an what? Eagle. We are redeemed as spiritual eagles to so are where other struggles. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you know why the eagle is so unique? I've shared it before, but yeah, when this month makes the eagle eagle. The eagle, when there's storm, that's why you see the beauty of the eagle. When there's heavy storm, you will not see eagles anyhow until there's storm. When there's storm, every other bird will flap their wings and struggle to fly because the storm will be against them. Then the eagle will stand at the top of the mountain. High mountain. Eagles don't just fly anyhow. The eagle will stay at the top of the mountain. He will first calculate the direction of the wind. He will look at how the wind moves. Then when he's able to calculate the direction of the wind, he will now leap and spread his wings. So the wind carries him. Because he already knows the direction of the wind. So he, when others are flapping, the wind just does the job. That's why he soars. When you are an eagle Christian, you don't move like others. The mountain top, the rock is the word. The wind is the Holy Spirit. So eagle Christians, they calculate the direction of the move of the Spirit of God. And they stand on the word. So when others are flapping to fly, they say we're in charge. What is harassing you? I'm just so happy. They don't move like others. They move by the leading of the Holy Spirit. May from this day, your steps be guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the lost portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste holy wilderness. He led him about, instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stared up her nest, fluttered over her young, spread abroad her wings, taking them, buried them on her what? Now, this scripture is a life scripture that the Bible is talking about. This, this scripture is a life scripture. Is it what? So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strength God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of what? The flint rock. That place is verse 11 where you saw this is how eagles behave. The mother eagle has a nature. She will be bringing food to her baby eaglet when the baby eaglet is born. Then after a while she will one day come up, take a pick and begin to tear the nest of the baby eaglet. That's how every mother eagle does. She would tear, you know, just imagine if the baby eaglet would be saying, what is my mother trying to do? Then she would stay in front of the baby eaglet and push the eaglet out from the top. 
Then the eaglet will begin to wonder, this my mother must be wicked. At the point the baby eaglet wants to crash, she will go under her and then take her up. She will carry her up and then she will take her up again. She will do it repeatedly. Then a time will come, she will now shift her wings and show the baby eaglet like this. Side by side. The baby eaglet will try to flap. And as the baby eaglet flies, she will now smile. She will laugh. The two of them will fly. That is how God does with us. When you are newly born again, he gives you everything. If you watch, if you notice when you are born again, you don't pray too much. Everything happens freely. Then as you begin to grow, he wants you to develop the ego's nature. He allows challenges to come. It's God who does it possible. He wants you to bring out the potential of the creature in you. He says, my friend, what I have is inside you. You are not a failure. I'm the omnipotent. So I put all my potentials inside of you. Come on, what I have as God is also inside you. He allows you to go through the face and all of a sudden, when you don't give up and you say, yes, I can, you see the nature begin to appear. So that challenge is not to destroy you, it's to make you. The beauty of the orange is when it is squeezed. Your juice will not come out until you are squeezed. If there was no Goliath, there wouldn't have been King David. He said, he has raised us up and made us sit together with him in heavenly what? Far above. All principalities and what? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Ephesians 1, 20, 21. So God is saying to you, boy, you are far Can you shoot an arrow from the ground and hit an aircraft? So the arrows of the wicked can't reach you because you're an eagle. Now, have this men, have this far above mentality that arrows of witches and wizards can't reach you. No, listen. It's a spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual war. It is your mentality that will enhance your victory. Now listen. The arrows of the wicked cannot reach you because you are far above. No matter the arrow shooter, he can't shoot an aircraft in the sky. You are an equal Christian. So where you are, all this small, small charm can't reach you. Boy, stop warning yourself about charms and spells. They can't reach you. You are far. Principalities are... Look at what God said here. For benefit of those who may not know, Ephesians 2.6. Then I bring it back to Ephesians 1. Look at it. 2.6 first. He has raised us up together and made us sit together. Where? Where are you? 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 You are inside him? Now listen. That in Christ, chapter 1, read from 20. Which he wrath in Christ. Are you seeing it down again? Which he wrath when he raised it from the dead and set my soul right down in the heavenly places. Far above. Far what? Principality and what? And might. And every name that is named, not only this one, even that to come, even if it's something that will come tomorrow, it's among them. You are far above Ebola. Including the ones that are yet to come. You are far. Look, when you have this mentality, sickness can harass you. You are far above diseases. You are far above champs and all these old that project with champ ignorance. My people are destroyed. Over one knowledge, I have never bothered myself. Now listen, life story. I used to be defiled as a non-believer. That's somebody who take a woman's face and defile me. When I became born again, I read a book by Bishop Edeko, Listen to the Supernatural. That was the first book of him I read. In that book I saw, I'm seated far above. Nobody lays hands on me. Two weeks after new birth. I read it from Paraco to Lagos. I was traveling. Not, I didn't pray. I didn't say, Satan, I cast you out. Don't defile me. That thing never happened again. Till today. I'm far. That's deliverance is not somebody pushing you to fall down. It's not fall and die, fall and die. That's not deliverance. Deliverance is getting knowledge to be free. You see, the church shall be delivered through what? Proverbs. Level verse nine. Deliverance is not somebody coming up. Lose your hold. Lose your hold. Lose your hold. Lose your hold. Lose your... That's not deliverance. That's ignorance. Proverbs eleven verse nine b. You are far. 
you will sleep like this. Ah. Your father about what? With his hand. Please put his hand. Let me say this to you. The armed robber, the one in him is the devil. True? Who is in you? Christ? Christ is what? Far above? It's a spiritual warfare. Please let me digress a little bit. He said, we're wrestling against flesh and... Now, when you are conscious of this and you're in a house, the one in the arm robber is the devil. The one you is in Christ. So when the arm robber gets to your door, the one in him will tell him, this guy is far above, move, cross. That's why you have to say, they got to my door, they cross. It is your consciousness of who you are. In the spirit it will play. The devil will know that this person knows who he is. So, when he gets to your turn, he will jump. Because it's not a physical battle. The thing you are seeing physically is controlled from the supernatural. So, before the arm robber gets to your door, something he will tell him, this particular door, don't reach it. Because this one is not in our class. It's above us. So, he gets to your door, he crosses. And then he said, they did not enter my house. It is your consciousness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Arm robbers have opened our door, could not enter. My wife is here. We were alone in the house long ago with arms. Anything arms you can think of. They came with sledgehammer, came with heavy, heavy weapon. They dropped them at the top. They opened the door with what was that massacre or whatever. They could not enter. Two of us alone were sleeping. Nobody they have. That's if they enter, they will see us. They did not, not they could not cross. They left their arms in front of the door and left. Far above. If it's now. But even then, you know, we kill them with my mouth. But they could not enter. They could not what? This thing is not. Most times we pray, even the prayer is with fear. Praying with ignorance, you won't get result. When you have this kind of knowledge and you get up to pray, you see results. Pop! You say, you devil, hear me. Because you are superior now. Hey, my God, I break here. Say, I'm in charge. Say, I am in charge. Point to that devil. Say, you devil. You devil. I'm far above you. From today. You and your agents. After my life. I curse you. In the name of Jesus. And every devil. After my destiny. I command you right now, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. And whatever blessing of mine that you have with the authority, take your hands off. I take delivery of all that belongs to me in Jesus' name. So I'm in charge. Who am I? What am I worth? <laughs> I'm going to tell you something that <laughs> is very loaded. Now that you know who you are, you know what you are worth and you know where you're from. Where are you from? Who are you? A lion and an eagle? Then you should also know your what. Your what is that all things are possible with you. Number four, all things are what? All things, I said you, these things you must know. You must know who you are. Where you're from. And what you are worth. Who are you? You're a spirit. You're a lion. You're an eagle. True? Where are you from? Help. What is your worth? All things are possible with me. Practical. With me, all things are possible. With who? With who? All things are possible with me. That's if you don't know. Me, I will say with you. But you will put it. With me, so you're with me. <laughs> Let me say this possess an all things possible mentality. Possess what? An all things are possible mentality. Possess an all things are what? Possible mentality. So you and I are redeemed to operate in the realm of all possibilities. All what? So, we are spirits being 
is redeemed to live above human limitations. To live above what? What limit other people should not limit us? <laughs> Please, change your perspective. That's why things will not happen. Don't ever allow what limit other people limit you. Listen carefully. Anything that limits others should not what? Limit you. No. It can limit other people, but not you. Not you. Now listen carefully. If you can believe this word, all things are possible. Is that true? Mark 9.23. There is no impossibility if you can believe. Now listen. Let me say this to you. Is there any impossible case with Jesus? Eh? You sure? You are sure? Is there anything impossible with Jesus? Who is in you? Who is in you? No, no. Christ is in you. So you are walking your legs is who? Your hands. Your mouth. Then why you say things are impossible? Simple again. I come again. <laughs> now, let's see. Let your eyes open. Who is in you? The hope of glory is in you. My legs. My hands. My mouth. Then why am I saying it's impossible? Is anything possible with Christ? Okay, come here. Come here. It's very simple. A, B, C. Is anything impossible with Christ? Who is in you? In you? I walk. I live. I sleep. I talk. Then why am I saying it's impossible? Change your mind. Renew your mind. Who is in you? You are sure? I, he said, for me to live is who? I walk. I sit. I talk. So why do I say something is impossible? Renew your mind. There has to be a new consciousness for the children of God. You know, you can know it, but if you are not conscious, it's like relapsing. So that's when we are conscious, we do. After a while, we relapse back to our former state. Now, get to a point where you don't relapse anymore, you permanently live in that state. Most times, when teachings are done like this, you are conscious, but give it two days, you come back again. So that's why you keep renewing yourself with the word of God. Those have heard it. That's why you keep hearing the word of God. I don't relapse. Not to make me relapse. I'm so conscious of where I am that when I walk, Christ is walking. When I sit, Christ is sitting. When I talk, Christ is talking. Ooh. Are you getting what I'm talking about? That's why you don't say, I've heard the word. You keep it. What's some of you now? As you hear now, this night you'll be charged. Tomorrow night you go back. May you never go back. John chapter 14, verse 12. Woo! Mama, 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 mama. Are you blessed? Very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the words that I do shall he do also. Why did he say so? Because he's in you. He's in what? He said, greater works than this shall he do because I go to my father. I have gone, but I'm dropping all that is in me in him to continue the things I did. I am going, but I'm in him to continue my assignment. Oh! Where's Christ? You are sure? Then you are afraid. Where is Christ? Then you say you go to the embassy and they will turn you back. Where is Christ? And then you say you will not succeed in life. Where is Christ? And you say, see the way things are doing. I'm not a man like me. Are you not That's why Paul understands that I can do all this. Listen, why he says so. <laughs> I cannot, through Christ, the one that is in me, who sent me, my strength is the one inside me. They said, oh my God, Abraham. Paul was a man who understood it. I can do, this is some things. How many things? You read the scripture every time. He's saying that because he knows that Christ is in him, so he says, I can do anything. Anything I can do, there's no possibility. Yeah, from today, there's one language you should never say. This is not possible. It's possible because Christ is in you. He said, I can do all things through the one that is inside me. Who is in you? He said, I can do anything in. Never say in your life something is impossible. Paul had deep understanding. He said, I can do Save me from today. Nothing is impossible. So, possess a what? 
All things are possible with me mentality. Possess what? Say it one more time. So you need an understanding of your redemptive rights in Christ. Otherwise, you'll be a preacher of the devil. Say, God forbid. To flow in all this, let me close on this note. To flow in all this, as I've said, build yourself with the word of God. Build your what? To flow in all these things I've shared with you, build yourself with the word of God. Build yourself. He said, that was we have found and I did eat them. Jeremiah 15 verse 16. And the word was unto me, the joy, the joy of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Jeremiah 15 16. Acts 20, 22. Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And to give you an inheritance among them which are what? Sanctified. So sit down with the word. Sit down with what? Sit down with the word. Now, just go and read the book, the real you. One small book, the real you. Read it in one hour. Get it and read. The real you. It's among the packet of the supernatural. The real you. One of our doctors here, who is a medical doctor, says she used to be afraid because she had a very scary incident in her life. So she could not enter theater as a medical personnel. And she came and I said, go and read this book. With the book, she knew who she was and that devil left. So I hear. Now, let me tell you these people in the Bible. Look at these three people I'm going to share with you. Now, the man Daniel, what made him not be afraid to get into lion's den? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. By what? So he had understanding of who he is. So when they say, put him in the they say, forget it. God is with me. I'm going there. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. These are people who have no fear of any situation. Daniel had no fear. If you look at Daniel, for example. Some examples of scriptures of who exemplified the supernatural. They exemplified the super... Some examples in scriptures. One or two of them who worked the supernatural. Daniel. Daniel 9 times 2. Now look at the man Paul. Paul wrote to thoughts of the New Testament. He wrote what? Of the New Testament. And hear what Paul said. All of them made the same statement. In 2 Timothy 4 verse 13. He said, the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee and the books, but especially what? He said, bring the books. If you want every man of such knowledge, they are readers. Daniel said, I... I, Daniel, understood by books. Paul said, bring my notes. Bring my what? You don't cover your note after church. Please learn to be open your note. He said, that part may miss my notes. Paul said, study to show yourself approved. The woman I did not mention, I did divide the word of what? He said, I can do. This man was stoned. He did not die. They stoned him. Paul was a man of unusual strength. Man of what? He has so much knowledge in God's word. Okay, look at Jesus. Let me close with Jesus. The Messiah himself. Do you know the strength of Jesus? Books. What? Daniel. Paul. Jesus. There's no shortcut to. Look at it. And he came to Nazareth. Who is this? Where he was, he has been brought up. This is where he grew and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Who is that? Who is Jesus? The word? The word was reading the word. Stay there. I don't, I don't, I don't have time. You will never pray this supernatural. Verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the what? Yeah, the book. Book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, it's not just buying the book, you must open to read some of you have library copies. When they say, I have it. I have, I have it. He's not having the book. He's reading the book. He said, he opened the book. He found the place where it was written. So it was there. He did not know. It was until he opened. Some things about you now. Go and open the book and read more. No church can teach you everything. You have to also read some. Verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is what? It has been upon him since it is when he opened the book in you. 
That is the message. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the broken hearted. To preach deliverance. They don't pray deliverance. They preach deliverance. See, Jesus said. Two things they don't pray for is deliverance and poverty. They don't use prayer to come out of them. They use God's word to come out of poverty and deliverance. But our Africa is in particular this part of the world. We are going to pray today. All poverty demons will go. They don't pray against poverty. They don't pray against when it comes to deliverance, you must know the word of God. Some of you now, you agree with me with this knowledge, you are already charged. True? Without prayer, you will harass the devil and the devil will be afraid. It's knowledge that you used to overcome the devil. He said, to preach deliverance to the captive and to recover of to the blind, to set a liberty and what? And he closed the book. Verse 20. And he did what? Stay there. Let me say this to you. Please understand that you cannot operate in the supernatural by guessing. By what? You can't pray by guessing. No, you can't pray this by guessing. <laughs> There's no tumbo, tumbo, boss, calamity, there about us. <laughs> but by giving the world a serious approach, a serious what? You must give the world a serious, you must, for you to give a glorious result, you must give the world a serious approach. Well, let me say this to you. Everybody read the scripture. Let's stop there. Walk in my absence. Now read the next one slowly. One after that. Walk out. One, come back again. Walk out. Talk again. With fear. You say walk out your own. Jesus walked out his own. Daniel walked out his own. Paul walked out his own. Walk out. No free gift. If they pray for you today, we don't pray for you every week. He said, walk out your own worth. So take time to pay the price. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. That's why you must be yelling such words. You must be what? Walk out. It's not a waste. True? Many of you are blessed. Is that not true? Walk out your own. Walk it out. Walk it. Walk it out. Walk it out. I said, walk it out. So your prayer now, Lord, I receive grace to walk out my own. I refuse to be lazy. I refuse to be... The materials are available. Our problem is laziness. Is what? There's no shortcut. All great men in the Bible did today, they are people who are given to the word of God. When you physically feed on the word, physically, just feed on the word, physically, physically, you'll be very healthy and robust. Go and open your notes. Go and open your... Lord, I receive grace to pay the price. That's what you pray. Lord, I receive what? To pay the price and to remain focused on the things I have heard. Go ahead, in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to pay the price. I receive grace to pay the price in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to pay the price. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace to pay the price. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace to pay the price in the name of Jesus. To walk in the supernatural. To walk in the supernatural. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. You pray one prayer. Do you believe all things are possible? How many believe all things are possible? One is to believe, two to forget. You pray that the Holy Ghost should make you to be conscious that all things are worth. I'm so conscious. If you come around me and say, this can't happen, I will correct you. I live with it. You can never come around me and say, this thing cannot be done. I will never agree. You are going to pray, Holy Ghost, make me to be conscious of all things are worth. Mental. Anything someone says, you say, it can be done. It's possible. That mentality, when it comes on you, eh, you will pray it in another realm. There's nothing you come to me and say, this can't happen. I'll tell you, it is possible. I don't ever accept defeat. Never. Nothing in this world can make me accept defeat. 
I will tell you this thing is possible. One thing is to know it is to be conscious of it. Lord, I pray that I have become what? Conscious of all things are possible. Let that mentality dawn on me for life. That if somebody comes to your office and say, this cannot be done, they say, boy, relax, it can be done. Go ahead and pray for yourself. I pray to be conscious of all things are possible. I pray for the mentality that all things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things make me conscious that all things are possible. Father, in the name of Jesus, from today, may the all things are possible mentality rest on you. I'm going to pray for you now, the same way healing takes place. I'm so conscious of all things. I'm so everything you're seeing happen here is that mentality. There's nothing that is the mentality that makes me listen. Please be expectant because when it does on you. What move others will move you? When others say this cannot happen, you say, well, forget it, it will happen. I will make it. Please set your heart because the same God that is here is the same God that will turn your mind. The same Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. All things are possible mentality. Baptize everyone that desires it with it in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of the living God. Put your hand on your mentality. All things are possible mindset. Let each one that desires that kind of mentality receive it now in the name of Jesus. The ever consciousness of that mentality dawns on you from this hour. Is the dawn of a new day for someone? From this day, it, you will never say this thing cannot happen. You will never say it's not possible. That consciousness, even in your sleep, you will say it is possible in the name of Jesus. And grace to make it happen. Receive now in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, the prophetic with David Ibiomi. From this day, may the liar's nature in you come alive. May the dominion of the eagle be stirred up now. May possibility mentality become a way of life and dominate your world. In the name of Jesus, go and take charge. You return tomorrow with testimonies. As you issue commands, so be it. In Jesus' mighty name. The world is full of unrest. Money has failed. Human intellect is not working. You need Jesus. In him you will find peace and rest. Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Those who are not born can say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Right now with my mouth, I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. To watch our live services, visit our website at www.smhos.org. If you want us to pray or counsel you, please call.
you can also stay connected through any of these our social media accounts. This message is brought to you by Salvation Ministries Home of Success.